billion dollar liability. It's almost as big as they've spent on South Canterbury finance. Dr. David Clark. Mr. Chair, thank you for the opportunity to speak on uh, the clause four of the of the bill. And uh, again, I, I wish to speak, of course, to Mr. Parker's amendment and uh, and and take up his position or his concern, at least, that at the Greens' position on this, um, I, I want to really just raise the question and invite uh, a contribution from the Green Party because this is an important issue. And the debate that we're having, it seems to me, Mr Chair, is about some really uh, big economic issues that are affecting the world. Uh, the way in which the IMF provides advice, who takes it, uh, is stuff that's been canvassed in the committee stages. How, how we... Uh, as a country respond to that advice, whether, you know, we talked about whether a capital gains tax is, is useful or not, or I did in a, in a previous contribution, Mr Hayes interjected that he thought it wasn't, and, and, and the debate has gone on. The National Party uh, notably haven't uh, contributed much to this debate either. And uh, I find that concerning. I'm, I, I am enjoying, I guess, as well, at the same time, the contributions of my colleagues. Uh, uh, David Cunliffe and David Parker have both uh, explained why this legislation is important, but also why uh, Clause 4 uh, should be taken out of the legislation, because it, it fails to allow in future for proper parliamentary scrutiny of changes. And uh, David Parker briefly covered those times when the articles of agreement had been amended, and uh, I actually have the schedule in front of me of all of, all of the, uh, the significant changes in the history uh, of the IMF that, um, that might fall under that. And in 1968, we see they were repealed. It wasn't then until 1976 uh, that the articles of agreement were updated again. Now, that is, that is Mr Chair, uh, an eight-year gap. Only once in eight years did our Parliament get to uh, debate the Articles uh, of Agreement in the IMF. It wasn't then until 1992. From 1976 to 1992, uh, those Articles of Agreement stayed in place, and then in 1992, I imagine, this Parliament debated again whether they should be changed, how New Zealand uh, stood or where New Zealand stood on uh, international aid and development aid uh, and how the world's economy uh, should be encouraged or not uh, in line with IMF advice, where New Zealand stood, what New Zealand's contribution should be, um, whether we were in agreement with the, um, with the expectations on us for contributions, for helping stressed uh, or developing countries to improve their economies, to stabilise them, uh, to make sure that they were growing in a, sta in a sustainable fashion. And then from 1992, the next time the Articles of Agreement came out was in 1998. So there was a six-year gap. And, uh, you know, that's two terms of Parliament. And, and for some of these, it's longer, uh, where these issues haven't been debated. So once again, from 1998, now we're through to, now we're through to um, 2013. That's a huge gap. It's a huge period of time that has elapsed. Uh, when we didn't have the opportunity to discuss these articles of agreement and how the Parliament should handle them. Uh, and now we are proposing uh, to not have this debate at all. Well, it certainly can't be said, Mr Chair, that this debate happens too often. And so I am, I am concerned that parties in this Parliament are not taking the opportunity when the last time they had it was in 1998. And we're talking about, Mr Chair, $1.8 billion of New Zealand funds. And when it seems to me that when the National Party, uh, you know, is, contribution is uh, limited to Mr Hayes' uh, insights around the capital gains tax, that um, that's not a full debate on the issue, uh, with all due respect to Mr Hayes. Um, and when we, we don't hear anything from the Greens about international economic issues uh, on a debate uh, that we haven't had since 1998, in fact, that presumably means the Greens uh, haven't contributed to this debate, uh, if I'm right, ever. Uh, we don't know where they stand on this, uh, other than that they oppose it uh, in general. Um, you know, perhaps if they were uncomfortable with the removal of this parliamentary scrutiny, they could have moved an amendment, the same as my colleague Mr Parker has moved, to say that they think that uh, these issues should be debated in the Parliament because they're important issues, because they affect significant amounts of money, but also because this is a matter of principle. This is a matter of principle. 
whether New Zealand chooses to partic participate in the uh, economic efforts to underpin the world economy, and whether it chooses to do that in a timely fashion. Uh, this legislation, uh, I will remind the House, is being rushed through now uh, because it wasn't looking like being ready in time, and suddenly it's come back on the, the order paper uh, to get it pushed through the Parliament, um, or whether New Zealand's going to drag its heels. You know, where New Zealand sits in the, Mr. Chair, Dr. In, David the, Clark. in the international community, it seems to me, is, is an important uh, point to be debating. So, so with respect, I am looking forward to, and I hope that, that the challenge that I've issued will be taken up by, by members opposite and, and hopefully also by the Green Party to outline their positions uh, in respect of this bill, in respect of taxpayers' money, the $1.8 billion uh, that, uh, that New Zealand commits um, to, to world development. And whether, you know, for the Green Party, whether it thinks that supporting developed countries uh, out of poverty is, is a priority or, or not, you know, whether that's the point of principle that's being debated here. Uh, the National Party, it seems to me, uh, does generally support these things. Uh, we have supported them in a bilateral fashion, but, it, but uh, we differ, of course, here on whether these things should be passed by order in council, whether they should receive the full parliamentary scrutiny. And so Mr Parker's uh, amendment that would um, that would make sure that Parliament did debate these issues when they come up every 13 years or every 20 years or every six years, I think is the, the shortest gap. Um, uh, Mr Parker's amendment makes sure that we do have that debate. And I think that, therefore, that is a very important amendment, and I would urge all members of this House to support it. I don't, I'd urge those members of the National Party opposite to examine their consciences to see whether they really believe that parliamentary scrutiny should be applied to this legislation or whether they are comfortable with a backroom deal being done on economic matters uh, where the world is concerned. And, and I suspect that, that if members opposite do examine their consciences, they may realise that the way this, is, this legislation is worded um, could be improved by simply adopting uh, Mr Parker's amendment that uh, we remove Clause 4 from the legislation and just simply bring this debate back to the House when it next comes up, which, which may be 10 years' time, maybe 15 years' time. But then to see what spread we have in the Parliament, Parliament what the different parties represented here think on these issues. Uh, as I made the point, the Greens uh, weren't here to have the debate last time these issues were debated. Uh, they didn't exist as a political party in the parliamentary realm. Uh, in, elected in what year? 97 first represented? Uh, well, we shall examine the Hansards to see what the contributions were there and whether they've updated their thinking since then. You know, I, th I think it is an important thing to be debating in this House. This is, this is a huge commitment from New Zealand. It's a matter of principle, and it is a, a large amount of money. So it's worthy of the time of this House, uh, even if we by and large agree on the principles, even if across the House we agree uh, on the principles of, of engaging in the IMF's business and in, in principle of uh, supporting and stabilising the world's economy. So uh, with that, uh, Mr Chair, I recommend Mr Parker's amendment to the House and urge all members to examine their consciences, to participate in this debate and make sure that we have some robust legislation that enables the proper scrutiny of these matters in our House in years to come. Um, uh, Mark Mitchell. I move that the question be now put. I'll call uh, Andrew Little. Thank you. Uh, 